Hey everybody, today I'm going to talk about uh, one very particular subject. Uh, I don't think anybody on YouTube has covered it before, but it's an important part of our hobby. So what you're looking at is quite sad. These are moths that are actually deformed or crippled, as some people may call them. And, well, it's a shame, but it's also normal if you breed a lot of insects, especially Lepidoptera, for some of them to fail and deform like this. So, I just wanted to talk about the subject. Um, as you know, um, butterflies and moths, when, in, when they emerge from the pupa, their wings are actually very small. And the reason for that is the wing surface area of a large butterfly or moth like this doesn't fit inside of the pupa. So what happens after they emerge is these wings are, uh, you know, think of it like, um, like an inflatable, uh, inflatable uh, sort of thing. And they inflate their wings by pumping their body fluid inside of them, called hemolymph. It's, uh, hemolymph is the insect equivalent of blood, except it doesn't ex transport any oxygen, just nutrients. Anyways, they use their body fluid to pump up their wings. And these wings are filled with veins, and these veins, they expand because of the fluid pressure. But this process can fail especially in captivity, because the conditions provided by humans are not always right for the animals. And these particular moths, I have ordered them online, and all of them are emerging crippled. And I think uh, the reason for this is because the, uh, maybe they were stored inside of the fridge. And some people, uh, some suppliers of cocoons and pupa, they store uh, they store cocoons in the fridge of tropical insects and why is because this delays their emergence and because their emergence is delayed the suppliers have more time to ship them before they emerge but the result is in some cases it will uh, distort the development of these insects and deform them and, and I think this is what happened right here but if this happens to you in captivity and you're new to this hobby, don't feel bad about yourself because it's normal and every bee breeder in the world will have experienced this. Because uh, these cripples, these deformances, they can happen for many, many reasons. And one of the, often one of the prime reasons is um, inbreeding. Inbreeding in captivity they can, um, it can cause uh, recessive traits to stack up and uh, a lot of genes of the butterfly or moth will uh, code for their wings which means these recessive genes will um, tend to express themselves in deformity but uh, stress can also cause this for example but um, or the wrong humidity if pupa are they desiccate they won't have a, 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 enough humidity to inflate the wings and the wings will dry much too quickly and it can be a virus even. Some viruses can cause deformances in uh, moths and in uh, butterflies too. And sometimes it's natural. It happens in nature too. It's a selective process and only the strongest will make it. Some will remain stuck in their cocoons for plenty of silly reasons. So it's very sad. It's a shame. But it's not always your fault. And in, in this case, I don't think it's, it's my fault. I have had crippled moths in the past, um, for example I've had um, uh, Indian moon moths, Actia selene, who were crippled because I gave them the wrong host plant in winter. Some uh, host plants don't have a lot of nutrients, so some ended up being malnourished. And I gave them Rhododendron in winter, which in winter doesn't have a lot of nutrients because the plant's overwintering. So. And because of lack of nutrients, some of them emerge crippled. Anyways, it can happen for many, many reasons, from viruses to inbreeding to improper temperatures or humidity or storage. And I think it's important to know it is not always your fault. And even if it's just your fault, you don't beat yourself up over it. It's normal. And it's just uh, good motivation to try again and improve your conditions for the species. Well, thank you for watching.